Okay, everyone's ready. So we are going to do the eye this week. All right, what do you guys know about the eye? The ball helps you see. It is a ball. It does help you see. People can be blind. People can be blind, okay. The white the eye is usually white when people are blind? It like mm, depends on what blindness and why. But blindness? There are several ways that you can be blind. Something can be wrong with your eyeball, and the eyeball can no longer receive the visual information. Something can be wrong with the optic nerve, going back to the vision center in the occipital lobe, and you can see with your eye, but your brain cannot process that information or is not receiving it, and you'd still be blind. So there's lots of different ways you can be blind. Having something make your eyes completely white and unable for light to get through to the back of the eyeball is just one way. Okay, so we're going to draw the eyeball today. I'm going to be using several colors. That's me. Okay, so remember the first thing we do up here is we are going to draw, you know, the title, cross, section of the eye. And if you want to, today we'll be drawing what's called a transverse plane. Which means, if we were looking at the eyeball, we're going to draw it as though we've cut an eyeball straight through the middle this way. And there's a very important reason why we're going to do that. Okay, and today's date. All right, if you want to use your underdrawing pencil, or a very, very light pencil. What are some of the really big shapes you notice about your eye? It's mostly circular. It is mostly circular. So we're just going to make a nice circle. Okay? Lots of different ways we can make a nice big circle. Now, because this is a transverse plane, to help me remember that, I'm actually going to put my nose over here. Why is that your nose? From up above, because we're going to be cutting this eyeball like this, so we are looking at it as if we're holding a bowl. Like I said, there's a very important reason why I'm doing this. Okay, we're drawing... If you imagine your eye, right, like this, we are cutting this eyeball through that way. So why don't we do it from the side? I'm going to show you why. And this is very, this is one of the coolest things about the eyeball why we're doing it this way. But think of the eyeball as a sphere. With the exception of the one cool thing, why I'm doing it this way, and I will tell you where we get there, it would look the same, because it's a ball, right? As long as you cut it through the lens on, an, on a halfway point, you're gonna get this view, again, with one exception. Okay, and then you notice we've got kind of a bulge out here, so you're going to want to do this. And if you very lightly put like one finger here, one, obviously with your eyes closed, you know, one finger in the corner of your eye, one finger in the corner of your eye, and your middle, middle finger there, and you start to move your eye around, you can actually feel the bulge of, of that part as opposed to here and here. You feel that? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that fun? Now be very gentle with your eyes, of course, at all times. All right, so that is where we're going to stop with our underdrawing. Okay, now you remember the rules. We draw and we label at the end, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a dotted line. I'll just pink for this, but that's just me. You guys can use whatever you want. This is going to represent light, and it's also going to help us cut our eyeball in half this way, from front to back. Again, this is very important. 
And once we've got that front to back, we're going to start adding some structures. Okay. All right, now the reason, and remember you, you are allowed to ask me to stop or slow down. The reason that I put the nose over here is because about 15 degrees off the center, we're going to put our first structure. This will end up being the optical nerve. So you're going to have that there. No, I know. Optical nerve is not directly behind the retina. It is actually 15 degrees off. No. And if you look at a skull sometime, you'll actually see in the orbital socket, it's almost complete, but there are slits on inside the orbital socket that are closer to the nose than anywhere else. And that is where this will come out. And that's how it comes out of your skull. Because otherwise you can actually feel right under your brow ridge and all the way around, you can feel the edges of your orbital socket. And the size, and whether the, this orbital socket, there are people, there are forensic pathologists who can look at a skull and based on the eye sockets can sometimes tell if someone's ancestry was more based in Europe, more based in Africa, or more based in Asia. Really? Because, the because it does affect the shape of the orbital socket, which in turn will affect the shape of the eye. Kind of cool, huh? Okay. So now we're going to trace the entire outline of, so start at the optical nerve, come around, and we're just going to trace the whole outline of the eye. This will be the sclera layer, okay? Okay. All right. And then, how do I want to do this? We're going to bring the sclera. Now, sclera comes from the Greek meaning the hard membrane. And if I can get my hands on an eyeball for us to all dissect later, you will find that this is very difficult to cover. So make another line parallel to the first. And this, like I said, is the sclera. We're not diagramming though, right? Or we're not labeling yet. Yes, we do, we do, we do labeling. We do labeling, but we're going to do it. Now, floating in the middle here, and I know I'm using my sky blue pencil or sky blue marker, but I'm just going to actually do it. We're going to insert the lens. The lens kind of looks like that. Okay? This is the clear part of your eye. Think of it, and it's very much shaped like a magnifying lens. Mm -hmm. Kind of looks like a pig's nose now. Okay. Now, what's the colored part of your eye? Your pupil. That's the black part. Oh. It's the colored part. We have, I have blue. You iris. Have it's the iris. Iris comes from a Greek word, and it means rainbow. It also is the goddess of rainbows, who was the female messenger god, much like Hermes. Um, yes? Can we go outside right now? All four of you stick together with inside of the door. So the iris, okay, is going to come over here and it's going to pass in front of the lens. Now, why is that? Mine is going to be blue because I'm blue eyed. You guys can make it any color you want. And when we build our eyes, you guys can make that iris any color you want. Well, talk to my eyes because I never know. <laughs> They're really dark brown. Does anyone know what the iris does? Uh, what? Protects. It, it does protect your eye. What does it do? Has anyone noticed if your pupil gets different sizes depending on where you are? Mm -hmm. If I'm outside mm -hmm. in a very bright, sunny, sunny day, my pupil will shrink to a very, very small size, but if I'm outside right at nighttime, it will be very large. The pupil dilates 
and constricts to allow the proper amount of light into the eyeball. Hmm. And it protects your eye. If when I go to my dot optometrist, they paralyze this muscle. It's a muscle. And in fact, if you look, get a mirror and look really, really closely, you will see the fibers of that muscle. And each person's iris is slightly different. Now you want to get a mirror, don't you? Okay, so in front, in front of the iris, in front of the lens, is the iris. Okay, now, I'm going to grab another color. I think I'm going to grab pink. Right here, behind the lens, okay? I'm going to create something called the ciliary bodies. It's going to come here, like this, and then we're going to come all the way back here. The ciliary body are going to end. It looks like slime. <laughs> Think of them like muscle tissue, muscle fibers that are reaching down into the eye, okay? So, and then all the way back and ends there. And then one more layer. I think I'm going to make mine dark blue. Okay, behind the ciliary body is going to come a third layer. Now this layer is very special because it's going to go all the way around and it's actually going to come out here. You see that? It goes across the optic nerve opening. That will be the retina. So we've got three layers, the sclera, we've got the ciliary body connected to what's called the choroid coat, right? Choroid yep. coat. Cor and then we have the retina. So far so good? Are we all... I've heard this stuff called the, I've heard it. Yes, but who's going to see your eye if you're just magnifying it? <laughs> detaching retina. You have heard of a detaching retina, yes. I'm at high risk for a detached retina. So, so far so good. Now, what holds those lenses in place? Mm, muscles. Suspens suspensatory ligaments. What does suspensatory sound like? Suspense. To suspend. Suspense. Now I found out that Suspense. we know that suspend means to kind of hang in space, right? I found that the Latin word for it is actually suspendere, which does mean to hang up. It also means to kill by hanging, to make uncertain, to render doubtful, and a whole bunch of other things. Okay. Yeah, because so, it isn't Latin you're without going to doing something. Suspend. You remember this will be all the way around the eye, all the way around the lens. We're going to suspend the lens. From the lens to this space between the ciliary body and the iris. Actually, does that connect? It does connect to the ciliary body. My apologies. So the ciliary body is going to come up here and it's going to connect to the suspensatory ligaments. There we go, much better. Alright, so now we've suspended the eye the lens in place. We've got an iris to open and close that aperture. Okay, now, coming back here, we're going to make an adjustment to our retina. Right where that center line crosses that retina, here's my dark blue, we're going to make a pit, like that. Right where the light will hit at the very back of the eye. Okay? This is not on your Diagrams. So just pay attention to this. This is going to be very a flaw diagram. Am I in the flaw? Yeah. Okay. And now, final thing, coming out of the optic nerve are going to be arteries. So you guys can have a little bit of fun here drawing. The artery, and if you have arteries away from the heart going into an organ, what do you have to have to? Yep. You have to have veins going back to the You heart. have to have veins going back. The veins vacate back to the heart. Oh, I like that. The veins vacate back to the heart. Everyone's, um, everyone's arteries and veins in your eyeball are unique. You can actually identify a person by the vein patterns in their eyes. It's just really hard to see. So what happens if it's an eye of a dead person? Would it help? Is it still 
if the eyeball is still intact, as in death is relatively recent, you can still see these, if you, but you have to have something to compare it against. So even though, for example, I go see my optometrist twice a year, she dilates my iris and she looks at my, um, she looks at the veins in the back of my eye, uh, she has no photographs. So there's nothing to identify it with. I know she does this because I can see my own veins of the back of my eyeball when she does it to me. Like I can see reflections inside my eye, which is both really cool and really weird. Okay, so here's our eyeball. Now we're going to start to label stuff. Okay? And this, I'm gonna ask you guys to pay attention because there's some mistakes in the diagram. All right, so this outside layer, remember, is the hard membrane, also known as the sclera. That's Greek, meaning hard membrane. Now, the next membrane here, this pink one, before it reaches these finger-like extensions. Now, remember, always start your um, your identification line in the center of the structure. If you put it on the edge, you're identifying a surrounding structure. So put it in the middle. So put your, come up and over, and this is called the choroid coat. Latin, not Latin. So you're right, choroid is actually Greek, choriedis, meaning um, it resembles, and coat, meaning an outer garment, this one's Old English. So choroid coat. And now these finger-like extensions, these are the ciliary, cili, <laughs> silly. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so they're going to have us call it the ciliary body, which consists of ciliary muscles in the ciliary process. Ciliary, Latin or not Latin? Latin. You, you say Latin? You say Latin? What do you say? Uh, Latin or not Latin? Not Latin. Not Latin. Okay. It is, comes from the Latin word cilia, meaning eyelid or eyelash. You kind of see why? Where is the eyelid? The eyelid, if it was here, would be right here. Wow. But again, we've cut right through the center of the eye. Okay. Now, this is one spot where things are going to have to be a little altered. This is not the aqueous humor. The aqueous humor, meaning humor from the Latin humor, meaning body fluid, and aqueous meaning, what is it? Tears. Mean? Not tears, but crying. What is aqua? Water. Water. Water, water like Pure. body fluid. Aqueous humor. Um, this is actually called the anterior chamber, not the aqueous humor. So this is one of the little mistakes we made. This is one of the little mistakes in our diagram because it is the aqueous, the anterior chamber and the posterior chamber are filled with aqueous humor, but they are not themselves aqueous humor. It would be as if someone pointed at one of these and said, this is blood. And you're like, well, no, that's an artery. It's filled with blood, but it is not itself blood. Okay. Now this space, let me see. Try to make sure, okay. The clear, the clear section here, that bump you can feel when you roll your eyes around, yeah. that is called your cornea. Oh, yeah. Corn. It's corny. It's corny. <laughs> Latin or not Latin? Latin. Latin. Uh, I Almost exactly Latin. Um, it comes from cornu. Does anyone remember what cornu means? Uh, Cornucopia. <gasps> cornu. Plenty! Copia means plenty. Cornu. Field, crop. Yeah. Crop of plenty. Horn. It does mean horn. Isn't that weird? So according to this, the cornea, the firm transparent anterior portion of the eyeball, comes from the Latin cornea, meaning a horny web or sheath, from the Latin cornu. Cornu. Yeah. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now this gap between the iris, what is this? A cornucopia. Um, in. Actually, I'm going to do. Pupils. Right. So I'm going to do this encompassing diagram here. Yep, this is the pupil. Latin or not Latin? Not Latin. No. Wait, Latin. You gonna say Latin? Not Latin. Not Latin? Um, what is it? Pupil. Not Latin. Not Latin. Okay, pupil. From the old French pupile and from the Latin pupilla, meaning a little girl doll. Do you know why? That one threw me too until I did some research. Do you why? know why? Because dolls have black eyes? No, not exactly. Kay. Has anyone been close enough to somebody to see their own reflection in another's eye? Yes. This is why. Because when you look in the reflection of another person's pupil, you see yourself, but really tiny, as though you were a doll in another person's eye. Last Monday, while mom was out getting Cooper from a machine, <laughs> I looked into Cooper's eyes and saw my own reflection. <laughs> okay, so we have the cornea, we have the anterior chamber. Now this colored portion is the iris. Sometime this week, get a mirror, bring it really close to your eye, and take a good look at your iris. And see, you can see fibers going back and forth from the edges of the iris towards the center. And sometimes you can even see the circular muscle that is right in the center of the iris. And the circle thing in the middle. The this lens. here is the lens. Lens, Latin or not Latin? Not. Has anyone here ever seen, handled, or eaten a lentil? Huh? I think so. I would not be surprised with your dad being a chef. We've eaten lentils. Of course, sometimes they get to turn to mush by the time I'm done cooking the lentil. If you look at a lentil, it is shaped like this from the top, but like this from the side. Like oh, so it's... They are cognate. Lens and lentil are Latin. Lens, and they lentil. named the lens that because it, apparently because it looks like a lentil, which they would have eaten. All right. And then down here, these are the... Does anyone remember? Yeah. All right. Suspensatory... Suspen ligaments. You have ligaments in your eyeball? Mm hmm They hold, they're all the way around your, your lens and they hold your lens in place. Wow. Okay, so we've got the sclera coat, the choroid coat, the ciliary body, the anterior chamber, not the aqueous humor. The cornea, the pupil, the iris, the lens, the suspensatory ligaments. So now this big chamber, okay, is not the vitreous humor. This is the vitreous chamber. Another mistake we made. Which is filled with vitreous humor. And you remember humor comes from the Latin Humor, meaning body fluid. <laughs> so we're left with vitreous. Latin or not Latin? Latin. Latin? Yeah. I got two Latin votes. Latin. Okay. Vitreous. Vitreous. We do have a couple words that are cognate in English, but they're really rare and unusual. Um, but it means glassy. It is gel like, it is more liquid toward the center of the eyeball and gets thicker toward the edges. So instead of being water-like, aqueous humor, it is glass-like. Kind of weird. Okay, now the blue layer, now remember to put your identification mark in the center of that layer. That is your retina. Latin or not Latin? Latin. Mm, not Latin. Wait, 
no Latin. It's been a minute. What? It's Latin. It's mm -hmm. first declension. Okay, so first declension Latin. Latin, you know. Latin, from the medieval Latin, retina. From the vulgar Latin, tunica. Tunica. Uh huh. So what does a tunica sound like? A tunic. tunic. A tunic. Mm -hmm. So or a net. net. So named apparently because when you do look into and see the retina, you see this net of blood vessels. The retina is where all of our light sensing organs are located. So in an eyeball like mine, which is almost football shaped, which is why I need very heavy um, vision assistance with my, my uh, contact lenses and my glasses, um, my retina is actually very thin. It's almost paper thin in some spots and it can come detached from the choroid coat. And if that happens, I will lose vision in that eye if I don't have it fixed within a few hours. So my, my optometrist has made me memorize all the different signs that I could be having a detached retina. Like what? Um, if it looks like you have um, a curtain falling on your eyeball, like there's suddenly this dark thing that's just descending, it means it's detached from up here or down here and it's just starting to float. If I see what appears to be lightning and there's no lightning, it's a sign that a lot of things are overstimulated as the retina may be starting to detach. The day before we had class, I saw this bright sparkling spot that started to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And I called my optometrist and drove all the way to him, only to discover I was having a um, ocular migraine. <laughs> so if you get too stressed, you're one of the ways your body can manifest. That is actually to cause almost a sparkle that grows until it reaches the edges of your vision and passes out. It can be a trigger for an actual head migraine. Too. For me, thankfully, it wasn't. Okay, so the one I added here, all right, so this one, this pit here, is the fovea or fovea centralis. Does anyone know what fovea means? Latin or not Latin, do you think? It's probably forever. <laughs> it's Latin. It's Latin. It's first declension Latin. It is a first declension Latin, fovea, foveae. It means pit or ditch. Remember in Fossa? It means pit. And I will not be wearing the dog in the ditch. Right, and then around it, and we can't have those lines crossed, so we're going to have to come way out here, is the macula lutea. Minimum light? Lutea. This one was a funny one. Macula lutea is literally Latin for the yellow spot. So when they found that in the back of the eye, they just named it for exactly what it sound, looked like, a yellow spot. Does anyone know how we see? We have two types of vision. Did you know that? Oh, yeah. Near sight and far sight. No. That's two different, uh, two different um, sights. Well, it's, it's two different ways that your vision can be bad. Nearsighted or farsighted is extremely nearsighted. I know how that focused my eyes. Mm hmm Yep. You're actually moving these ligaments. Oh. When you do that. Isn't that kind of fun? What about the thing you go over and out of your eyes? You have light and dark vision, and you have color vision. Oh. Has you ever noticed if you are outside after dark, you don't see much color? Things look more black and white. Because Have you ever noticed that? Yeah. Yeah. Next time you're outside, if you're outside in the dark, take a look. You'll notice that even if you're looking at something you happen to know is brightly colored, you won't see much or any color. Your vision will be fairly black and white. And this is the reason. Inside the macula lata and the fovea are cones, color cones. This is for bright light and color vision, sharp vision. And that's the reason why it's so important that that fovea is right here on the back side of the pupil. Because right directly behind your lens is the most sensitive and the sharpest vision. This, any damage to this, you could lose color vision and you can lose sharp vision. Hmm. So all of your, a lot of your cones, your color cones are centered right here. Now, the black and white vision 
the, the um, things that sense lightness and darkness, also motion, like anyone here seen the Jurassic Park and the, and the Tyrann Tyrannosaurus Rex can't see you unless you're moving? Those are rods, and the rods start outside the macula lutea, and they get more and more uh, dense as they move away. So when you have very dim, diffuse light, your retina can pick all that up. But when you have very, very bright light that shines directly back, it hits that fovea, the macula lutea, and it shines brightly. Now, here, this, this is a blind spot. You cannot see where these blood vessels emerge into your eyeball which is why I don't really like the diagram we have today, because if you look, it puts the optic nerve right here. Now, if you cut that eye this way, it makes sense because your optic nerve is on your equator. But then they've put the, de they've put the blind spot right where the, eye, where, right where the light needs to be, which is why I chose to cut our eye this way today to show you that, okay? And when we build our eyeball here in a few minutes, you'll see that. So I think this is one of the really coolest things about the eyeball. When God made the eyeball, he puts the part that's going to have the sharpest vision right where the light will hit. And he puts the blind spot off center. Now, over here, the blind spot will be over here, which means this blind spot is compensated by a part of the retina can see. And then on the other eye's blind spot is, part, is compensated by this part of the retina. So as long as both of your eyes are working, you have no blind spots, but I have a test in one of the books I brought today where we can actually prove and find the blind spot of each of our eyes. Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Yes. Um, in the girl's guide on how to be the best at everything, it has, has how to find your blind spot. Uh-huh. Okay, so that's your fovea centralis and the macula lutea, which is not technically mm -hmm. part of your thing. This section, and again, this is additional, this is the optic disc. This is your blind spot. Blind spot. Blind spot. And then, out here, this is your optic nerve. What happens when you cross your eyes? Um, you are moving your whole eyeball. And you actually also have muscles out here <laughs> that pull your eyeball. What you have four, here, 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 and here, and that helps you be able to move your eyes all over the place. Like this? That is really, um, I'm going to use the word intriguing, but what? that's creeping me out. I'm going to do this. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so here is our eyeball that we're going to work on. So what do you guys think? Okay. Do we feel okay with this? Yes. All right. right. This is the trash copy. Good copy. Hey, you know, you, this is about improvement, right? This is if you knew how to draw this to begin with, you'd be an optometrist, right? So, by the way, I did consult with a friend of mine who is an optometrist, and um, he helped me a lot out with understanding a lot of this and some of the cool, cool stuff. Oh, by the way, you have about six million color cones concentrated in here. Six million? Six million color cones. But you have 120 million rods. And when you have macular degeneration, ever anyone ever heard of that? My grandfather no. had that? That is where your eye starts to break down here. Which means you lose color vision and you lose central vision. Mm -hmm. Because, and it's really hard to do, we only see sharp vision straight ahead. Our brain is actually filling in details, but there are ways to show that you don't actually see stuff over here. It catches your vision so you can look. But your, your, your central vision is actually very, very small and very, very sharp. And your brain is basically drawing in all the details all around that. And if you see something out of the corner of your eye, you look and now it focuses. So really cool. Whoa. Yeah, so, you know, without damaging your eyes, you know, obviously don't press on them, don't do anything, but, you know, have some fun looking at different things this week. You know, how far out can you see your peripheral vision? You know, like, I can tell my finger's moving, but I really can't tell anything else. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Okay.
So we're going to build an eyeball now. Anybody have any questions about how to draw this week? No, but I have something to tell the uh, audience. What? That there's a Minecraft map on. Uh, okay. In the marketplace that is free. Uh huh. Where they at? Yep. There's also if you guys want to do um, Satera, they have an eyeball quiz as well. Right here.